propaganda campaign linked to Saudi Arabia's government. 350 accounts have been banned from the social media platform for boosting state propaganda and attacking the region's rivals. It's the latest wave of takedowns which has also targeted Russian, Iranian and hate groups. Let's bring in Andy Carvin. He's a senior fellow at the Atlantic Council's Digital Forensic Research Lab. He joins us via Skype from Washington, D.C. Um, Andy Carvin, your organization, I understand, has worked with Facebook to analyze uh, the Saudi campaign. Briefly talk us through what you found and how long this has been going on. Well, it turns out there are actually two campaigns that came down today. One of them, as you said, was the Saudi network uh, connected with the Saudi government. Another set of Facebook pages uh, that came down today were connected to a PR firm based in the UAE. Uh, and both of them were using Facebook pages inauthentically, in other words, pretending to be someone or something they weren't, uh, in order to sh uh, share messages that supported their government's policies in the region while uh, criticizing local rights rival governments. And so in the case of Saudi, uh, we saw a number of pages that supported uh, the crown prince uh, uh, that were fan pages for the military, as well as pages that were set up uh, essentially to uh, share what they said would be news, but uh, were actually very clearly propaganda. Yeah. And it's worth pointing out, Andy, that countries in the Middle East have increasingly turned to social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, to peddle their covert political influence online. I mean, Riyadh was accused of using the same tactics to attack its regional rival Qatar and also uh, to spread disinformation following the murder of the Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi. Oh, very much so. This this isn't a unique situation. Uh, many governments uh, on their own are creating these coordinated and authentic networks online in order to spread their messages and, and attack their rivals, or in some cases, as we're seeing here uh, with the UAE pages that came down, uh, a PR company was paid to uh, post uh, messaging uh, that uh, supported uh, UAE policies. And so it's certainly not new, but it's becoming much more prevalent. Uh, uh, and, and like you said, it's, it's not just Facebook. We uh, recently observed similar patterns happening on Twitter uh, uh, with uh, around 100 uh, Twitter accounts working in coordinated fashion to, uh, uh, to support the UAE's interests in the region. Andy, let me ask you, how unprecedented is this for Facebook to actually name a state actor in these kinds of disinformation campaigns? I wouldn't say what's going on right now is unprecedented. In fact, uh, if anything, it's happening more often. In recent months, we've seen Facebook take down uh, pages that have been associated with supporting interests in Russia, pages that were coming out of uh, Thailand, out of Honduras. There was also uh, a recent uh, a large number of pages, in fact, that were connected to a political campaign company in Israel called Archimedes Group, in which they were posting information uh, in support of different politicians and different causes all over the world. But they were all, in each case, they were all pretending to be someone they actually weren't. And so whether it's a, uh, a government actor that's organizing these inauthentic, uh, inauthentic campaigns, or in some cases, their commercial interest being paid by someone else to do it. Uh, it's, it feels like it's becoming a weekly occurrence, and that's because it pretty much is at this point. Yeah, just a, just a final thought from you, Andy. Are we likely then to see more social media platforms take this kind of action to take down accounts as more governments, more political groups increase their misinformation campaigns online? I think all the major social platforms have to consider how they balance out freedom of expression, uh, the, the, the right to assemble online, and uh, while at the same time balancing it with uh, what they might consider to be uh, propaganda or fake information, uh, disinformation. And I think the general trend that we're observing is people and entities still have the right to express their opinions however they want. But when they start pretending to be someone they aren't, that's when the platforms seem to be taking action. Andy Carvin, very good to get your thoughts. Thank you very much indeed for talking to Al Jazeera. Thanks. Now, Iranian.